Thank you. Hello? Is yes. uh, everybody listening? No. no. Hello? Okay. Okay. Buongiorno to everybody. This uh, is, um, is um, a summary talk of uh, one of the areas in Planck papers where you, where you find uh, foreground analysis. You know, the first thing to, one of the main messages uh, by, by Planck is the, the jump into complexity that the instrument allows for foreground studies. You know? so, so this is a, you should see these presentations as a subset of uh, all the science of foregrounds that you can do with Planck, which is already greatly represented in, in, uh, in uh, uh, different and specialized papers. This is a sort of summary of the foreground analysis which was done in the component separation paper for which the, 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 the CMB cleaning was just described by, by, by Mark. So I wanted to highlight uh, the foreground analysis studies in these, uh, in these um, institutes. It's pretty, it's pretty spread over all these, uh, these different contributions. So this is the outline of the, of the talk. Uh, the methodology for foreground studies in this, uh, in this paper will be outlined. There is a model of foregrounds which has been used uh, in these uh, analysis, inputs for the, with, um, from, from, from Planck and the results and the one other uh, um, um, feature which uh, <coughs> um, is, um, must be evident from the Planck papers is the robust validation of the results that we done. So um, Planck, in the component separation paper, adopted the pixel-based parametric approach for separating, separating diffuse foregrounds. Why is that? Uh, um, you, you do this for, uh, for uh, um, convenience of the problems that you, that you are facing, and also because, because foreground proper properties in the, in the pixel domain, in the real space, may be, may be uh, an a direct inspiration for uh, specialized studies or foreground uh, uh, physics, astrophysics. So typically, parametrizations of foregrounds are represented by, by spectral indices of the power laws describing the foreground, uh, the foreground components and their amplitudes. And uh, the fitting procedures exploit sophistications <coughs> of uh, mm, exploration of, uh, of parameter space by Markov chains. This is the, the present status of a long series of papers and algorithmic de development which <coughs> had uh, mm, uh, milestones which you see outlined in those references. I go back to 94 as uh, the main idea. So spe defining unknowns and fitting them over the entire uh, frequ um, multi frequency multifrequency um, Space. So there was uh, uh, there was the introduction of smart um, sampling in the in the parameter space, uh, in parametrization invariant uh, priors, and uh, steps overcoming the difficulty of having a computational load at low resolution by estimating the, the mixing metrics at low resolution and uh, and getting to, to high resolution. So the implementation is in the commander ruler paper uh, code, which, is, uh, which has been used in the, in the plan component separation paper. The foreground models, and here is, you should see this basically this as an incomplete list of the papers which already Planck um, dedicates to individual aspects of foregrounds. So the um, uh, Planck um, describes the, the, the low frequency foregrounds as a superposition of different, uh, of different emissions, all parameterized at a single power law. Planck is sensitive to, I think, nine uh, <coughs> transition of carbon mi monoxide. And uh, in this paper, <coughs> a simplified um, treatment was, uh, was adopted. There is a paper which, is which studies in deep uh, this, um, this, uh, this aspect of the, of the, of the Planck data. Uh, the, the one of the main foregrounds, the main foreground for high frequency was, was described as, a, as an amplitude and uh, emissivity. That's a, that's a, a black body disturbed by, by <coughs> star, heated back by starlight, which we call a gray body, characterized by, by emissivity and temperature. 
Uh, when you do parameterization like this, you, you, you deal with degeneracies. Degeneracies are, are represented, one of, one of those degeneracies is the existence of monopoles and dipoles in the maps, which need to be uh, treated at low resolution and, and removed. Okay, with this, you go with this recipe to the multi-frequency data set and you take the fit. So the inputs are <coughs> greatly redundant with, with, with uh, what, Planck, what um, Mark already said, basically, uh, the same data sets. They have instrumental inputs, uh, um, uh, uh, band passes, uh, and, uh, and uh, the maps. So one important aspect of this analysis is that, uh, as I told you, the fitting is, uh, is doable. But it is computationally heavy through Planck resolution, so it is convenient to, to reduce the resolution first, estimate the spectral parameters, which are full of astrophysical implication, and then, and then um, um, propagate the results to the full resolution by applying the <coughs> mixing matrix, which is estimated at low resolution. Results. So the here you see images taken from the, from the paper of the amplitude of the low frequency component and the spectral index of, of low frequency components. We'll, we'll come back on, um, on this part uh, uh, in, in the one quick comment in the end of the, of the talk, but you already see different colors here taking different values. And it is one advantage of the pixel-based parameterization because uh, even a simple power law descriptions, when you look at the mixing metrics overall over the sky, you see different, uh, different processes and you see that your fitting machinery tracks different properties, different, different emission regions which points you to different astrophysical processes which are, which are at low frequencies. It is not, uh, not that evident in this, uh, in, this, um, in this picture here as it appears here, but, um, but one remarkable feature of Planck, the signal-to-noise ratio, combined with the sophistication of, the, of your fitting procedure, allows you to do, to do high latitude science with foregrounds, which is an, another, another <coughs> big thing that Planck allows to do. This is a picture of, uh, of the amplitude and emissivity of the dust component. This is, this is the, the capability of, uh, of your fitting procedure combined with, the, with Planck signal to noise ratio to go to features at high latitudes of foregrounds, even in, in, in the frequency range in which those foregrounds, in particular thermal that is, is, is important, but not that important as the higher frequencies, is already evident here. Okay, so this, um, the data for this for the separation used in the component separation paper go up to 300, 353 gigahertz. And so this is the, the, the thermal dust, which dominates from 100 to 353, estimated from those channels. A separate analysis, dust opacity, uses the HFI frequency channels at higher resolution with similar techniques, and uh, a critical comparison will be, will be uh, proposed uh, uh, later. So you see here, excluding the brightest part of the, of the, of the analysis here, and, and taking the difference of the two, of two thermal dust solutions in the, uh, in the, frequ in the frequency um, channel in which they overlap, it gives you an idea of the consistency of the, of, the, of, the, of the capability of Planck of tracking foregrounds across frequency bands. Okay, something which, is, uh, <coughs> which can be done now and couldn't be done before, be before, before Planck to this level of um, of precision. In the, in the, uh, this is a scatter plot at 353, where you see the correspondence of two independent solutions using eight <coughs> frequency channels at high frequency starting at 353, and the, the results from the, from the component separation pipeline using uh, low frequency channels up to, up to, to 353. There is, a, there is a Planck uh, paper dedicated to CO emission, and, uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, representative of the, of the approach to the <coughs> carbon monoxide um, uh, line ratios, which was used in the component separation paper. So, in, in the, so 
as I, as I told you, if you, if you read um, the carbon monoxide paper for this particular foreground, you see that uh, out of the five, um, of, out of the HFI frequency channels, you see the, um, uh, so Planck is sensitive to a basically nine transition of these, of these molecular emissions. So it's a spring scope. You, 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 you get sensitivity and you get something of each of those lines in the, as described in that paper. For this, uh, for this purpose, one single line, line, line ratio was, uh, was adopted and looked for in the, <coughs> the multi-frequency data so through, the, through the fitting. So this has the advantage of actually increasing the signal to noise ratio of regions which are, which are uh, domin uh, let's say, um, uh, not dominated, but I mean influenced by this, by this emission. And, um, and by doing this, you gain also a capability of, of, um, of uh, uh, being a driver for, for dedicated inspections of this, of this signal, uh, as, as in, the, in the carbon monoxide uh, paper from Blanc. In these slides, you see, you see the, um, the transition, the mechanics of the, of the, of the foreground uh, pixel-based parametric fitting procedure, low, frequency, low resolution uh, results in the terms of amplitudes of these components are uh, outlined uh, here, you see, where you estimate everything, amplitudes and spectral indices. Then you leave spectral indices at this at the resolution 40 arc minutes, and you apply the mixing metrics to the full resolution data sets. And so you gain lots of details for, for the CMB, of course, but in particular for the for the for uh, emission to uh, to the the, the uh, <coughs> maximum Planck uh, resolution. No, I thought this is uh, <coughs> spectacular. So we are in the uh, at the point of tra of uh, making our transition to from results to 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 validation. So the first the first. Um, the first, uh, the intermediate product between re re validation and results is represented by the chi-square, which you can do with, um, with um, your parametric, um, parametric fitting. The model can be compared to data through the chi-square <coughs> a posteriori. So you see uh, chi-square values here, and uh, they are represented by several, several, uh, several at least three, three phases. One in the galactic plane, you see, because of the uh, so the model is probably too simple in the at these latitudes where the chi square explodes. There is an intermediate region in which noise uncertainties dominate, and also large scale features indicating probably again model um, problems in the modelization where the foregrounds uh, become uh, exceedingly low, so the, the fitting suffers. So Planck has, uh, has uh, a, a robust uh, validation procedure based on the full focal plane um, simulations that you, you, you will see discussed um, uh, uh, these days uh, quite extensively. So the same pipeline that, um, that uh, Mark and I are describing for, for, um, for the, the component separation was applied to, to, to simulations as well, where you, of course, can, can do comparisons input output comparison of the main components, as you see here, and discover the capability of your algorithm to track the different, uh, the different emissions. You see correspondence between, between solution and input up to, I would say, very low galactic latitudes for these components. And this uh, is a built-in feature of our separation procedure. This also allows you to define <coughs> these um, masks. The, the chi-square, of course, helps you de defining a confidence mask of your results, which is represent from data, which is represented here as a, as a white, uh, white line. Several checks can be done on the precision and the distribution of the error, revealing 
any, any deviation from, an, from a Gaussian distribution in the error is, uh, is a potential um, indicator of, uh, of problems in the separation. You can do that on the, on the outputs. You can do the fractional distribution of errors, and you can do that per, per frequency. So bringing in the information of the, of the, low fre of the, of the spectral indices. And you see most, um, most cases, except when you do the fractional error, the distribution is, uh, is rather Gaussian for all components. So this is, uh, as, um, this is a one bit of extra investigation for the low frequency components, which in this paper were des are described as a single uh, power law, to show again on simulations that uh, the, <coughs> the parametrization, the, 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 the mixing metrics actually tracks physical, physical component. You see here in this um, scheme of the orange in, sim in the full focal plane six simulations, the regions in which the different uh, low frequency components dominate. And then you can compare with the spectral index, which was delivered by, 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 the, by the fitting procedure, and actually see the correspondence, which uh, still needs to be properly addressed and quantified, probably in specific, uh, in specific papers, between, between the fit, your result of the fitting and the actual, the actual regions in which uh, different emissions uh, dominate. Okay, these are uh, the conclusion, technical conclusion of this, uh, of this paper. Probably I, Mark, should have uh, written some, some um, uh, um, common conclusion of this uh, enormous work, which probably sets the, the end of component separation as a whole thing. So the level of detail that, uh, that Planck allows you to do on foreground studies now, is likely to determine a, a specialization, specialization of algorithms for foreground cleaning, CMB reconstruction, and full, in this full study of astrophysical aspects of foregrounds. When we start uh, writing the paper together with, the, with, the, with the everybody, we immediately realize that a paper describing the CMB characterization at the level we had and the foregrounds astrophysical full glory details with Planck was probably something out of, out of measure. So this is, uh, this is the end of, the, of, this, of this presentation. So this is the, the tip of the iceberg of foreground content uh, out, of, out, of, uh, out of Planck. No? So there will, there will be uh, two other big sessions with, um, with um, um, specific talks on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning, which I point you to correct. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you very much. So, any question? Any question? It seems everybody wants to have a coffee. It looks like. So, since we are on time, my understanding is that we resume uh, at 11.40. And let's thank again all the speakers of this morning. <laughs> yes, I'm told that the coffee can be taken on both sides or from the, from the room.